Hello friends. In this video, we'll be covering the following three absolute dating methods. So let us start with the fission track dating method. This technique helps in dating of archaeological materials ranging from almost 20 years to 1 billion years before the present. This is one of the simplest of several dating techniques that we have discussed till date. This is because it depends on the statistically steady decay of radioactive nuclides such as uranium. It is a fact that uranium occurs in most rocks in the concentrations of 2 to 4 parts per million. And it is a common element found in the earth's crust, just like you can say tin, tungsten and molybdenum. Uranium is also present in seawater and can be recovered from the oceans. So we can say that uranium is abundant in the earth's crust. We have already discussed in the previous videos that the major isotope of uranium, which is uranium-238, it decays by spontaneous fission at a constant rate. Now, if the fraction of uranium atoms that underwent fission could be counted, then the age of the rock can be determined. This is the principle behind fission track technique. So how can we count these so-called uh, fission fragments? In fact, the fragments produced by fission of uranium nucleus create a single, narrow but readily detectable trail of intense damage known as fission tracks. Those solids which can register such tracks include certain uranium bearing minerals and glasses. In this method, scientists determine the age of the rock by visually counting the fission tracks of uranium-238. This is because etched tracks are relatively large. Uh, you can say in the range of 1 to 15 micrometers and counting can be done by using optical microscopy although other imaging techniques are also used. So this method is quite simple because uh, we need to visually count the fission tracks that are already registered in the solids. Although this is an unusual radiometric dating process, this fission track dating is accurate when used correctly and when the results are correlated with other dating methods. This technique of dating has made a significant impact on understanding the thermal history of continental crust, the timing of volcanic events, and the source and age of different archaeological artifacts. Next absolute dating technique is paleomagnetic dating. Now paleomagnetism is the study of Earth's past magnetic field. It is the combination of two words, paleo, which means ancient, and magnetism, which means exhibiting a magnetic field. So paleomagnetism can really be thought of as the study of ancient magnetic field. This paleomagnetism is linked to the earth's magnetic field. You might have already studied, the earth actually acts like a large spherical magnet. It is surrounded by a magnetic field that changes with time and location. As you can see in this graphical representation, the magnetic field represented by the arrows are generated by an imaginary dipole magnet located at the center of the earth with the north and south magnetic poles located near the geographic north and south poles of the earth. Do remember that this magnetic field is different in different places. In fact, the magnetic field changes with both location and time as well. What happens is that some rocks and materials contain minerals that respond to this magnetic field of earth. So when the rocks are formed, the minerals align with the magnetic field preserving its position. It is called rock magnetism when rocks record the position of magnetic field. The magnetic signature of the rocks allow the paleomagnetists to date the rocks and map the position of the field at the time of their formation. This study of magnetic rocks and the sediments to record the history of magnetic field is known as paleomagnetism. So how this is going to be useful in the field of archaeology? A number of studies have shown that a record of past magnetic field in the form of angles of declination or dip can be trapped in baked clay or ancient pottery you can say. What happens is that when the clay is heated to a certain degree, the magnetic elements of baked clay realign themselves along the lines which are dictated by the intensity and character of the magnetic field of earth at that time. So when the clay pottery is cooled down, the magnetic elements are frozen and can be recorded as long as the clay is preserved. This is called remnant magnetism. When such records of past angles of declination and dip have been kept, it is possible to compare the values of historic records and arrive at the date of archaeological specimens of fired clay. Now this uh, magnetic remnants is measured by using certain instruments such as flux gate, 
spinner magnetometer, superconduction magnetometer and other devices. This method has widely been used in Great Britain, Japan and Arizona. In India, this method was found effective in dating Kareva sediments of the Kashmir. Now the reliability on this method depends on certain conditions which have been listed below. You can go through these conditions, the availability of good records, occurrence of series of already dated baked clay in the area against which objects of unknown dates can be dated, availability of archaeological samples, fireplaces and clean which provide the best samples for dating. So you can see these are the preconditions uh, which make the use of paleomagnetism for archaeological dating suitable for a particular place. So this is all about paleomagnetism. Now third in line is the obsidian hydration. Obsidian hydration dating is a scientific technique which uses the understanding of geochemical nature of a volcanic glass called obsidian to provide both relative and absolute dates on artifacts. Though I had listed this specifically under the absolute dating category, this method provides both relative and absolute dates of an archaeological object. Now what do you mean by this obsidian? Obsidian is a volcanic glass that was used by prehistoric people as a raw material in the manufacture of stone tools such as projectile points, knives and other cutting tools. This is how an obsidian looks like. It is very easy to work with, it is very sharp when broken and it comes in variety of vivid colors such as black, orange, red, green and clear. Uh, you can also find transparent ones. So how and why this obsidian hydration dating works? Obsidian contains water trapped in it during its formation. In its natural state, it has a thick rind which is the tough outer skin of the obsidian and this rind is formed by diffusion of water from the atmosphere when it is first cooled. The technical term is hydrated layer. When a fresh surface of obsidian is exposed to the atmosphere as when it is broken down to make a stone tool, more water is absorbed and the rind begins to grow again. That new rind is visible and can be measured using high power magnifications. You can see this uh, when it is 40 to 80 times magnified. Prehistoric rinds can vary from 1 micron to more than 50 micron in thickness depending on the length of the time of exposure. By measuring and comparing the thickness of uh, two rinds, one can easily determine if a particular artifact is older or younger than another. So this way it is helpful in relative dating. Now how can we find this absolute age of an object? If the rate at which water diffuses into the glass for that particular chunk of obsidian is known, you can easily use obsidian hydration dating to determine the absolute age of objects. So in this manner, this technique can be helpful in determining both the relative and absolute age of an object. So we have covered almost three topics today. The next video will be the last one in this series where we shall sum up what we have discussed earlier and uh, we shall compare all the major dating methods in one slide. Till then have a nice time. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.